Welcome back to 2DG, two, 2 Douchey Guys, for yet another, another beer review, and this is another Western Turn. Wow, what do we got today? Uh, today, we have the Alesmith Speedway Stout, uh, another brewery based out of California. San Diego again. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an American Imperial uh, Stout for the style. Um, so what we expect is a lot of chocolate, a lot of dark fruit, a lot of coffee, um, as far as aroma and flavors go. Uh, this beer uh, does get quite a bit of hype, um, so I'm really anxious to see if it lives up to it. Um, I know that uh, they have a variation, it's called the Vietnamese Coffee uh, Speedway Stout, which is phenomenal from what I hear. Uh, this is the regular one, or called the base beer. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to get it open. All right, well let's do it then. If you're excited, I'm excited. Let's open it. <laughs> let's get your pour on. Ooh, that does look. It's a little lighter than I thought. Looks thick. That gorgeous head. So let's take a look at it. What a um, massive head. Yeah. <laughs> black as night. Yeah. Um, it's fairly black even around the edges. Yeah, it's a nice tan head. I'm not getting any light through even the very edges of the glass. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's give, a sniff. give a sniff. Wow. Yeah. A lot of chocolate, um, vanilla, some nice roasted malts in there, a little bit of toffee. A little bit of, I guess, alcohol. Mm -hmm. Tiny bit of coffee, not a lot, which is kind of surprising. Yeah, I would agree. I'm not really getting a lot of the bitter. Let's get that bitter. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. The bitterness, I feel like, is coming from uh, the roasted malt, maybe uh, yeah, a little bit definitely. bitter baker's chocolate. Um, it smells pretty standard for a good mm -hmm. stout, yeah. though. All right, stay safe. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, decent amount of bitterness. Uh, I didn't really expect that too much. I feel that's coming um, through uh, more so with the coffee than any kind of uh, hops or anything mm -hmm. like that. Uh, it's definitely an espresso bitterness. Um, you also get a lot of that baker's chocolate. It's not real sweet uh, like you would expect from like a milk chocolate type flavor. Um, you do get a lot of the coffee, like I said, more towards the uh, uh, middle of the tongue as well. Uh, on the back end though, I'm getting a lot of roasted malts, a little bit of dark fruit. Uh, not a lot though, surprisingly. Uh, and again, the, the dark chocolate flavor just kind of runs through the entire palate. Uh, on the back though, uh, I'm getting a lot, or not a lot, I'm getting a little bit of the alcohol in there. Um, and then that was more so in the uh, after effect as well. Um, but yeah, really nice taste in beer. Yeah, I would agree. The back ends where all the roasty roastiness is. I mean, a deep, rich, almost slightly chocolatey, but more like a roasted coffee. A good oily coffee. Mm -hmm. I mean a good Arabica or something that's just permeating through everything else. That's a good, it, um, good flavor. It is a lot more roasty than I thought it was going to be. Um, it is a, actually a little bit more carbonated as, as yeah. well. I, yep. I thought it was going to be more of a silky uh, type of uh, beer throughout. Uh, similar uh, to what you get from more um, of the bigger beers. Uh, this one is a 12%. Uh, so definitely not a sipper by any, or it is a sipper. Um, it's definitely not a beer that you're necessarily going to have every day. Um, For sure. I'd say it's got a fairly strong alcohol too. Oh, it, it, it does, which uh, is also surprising. Yeah. Um, and for people, again, that are new, uh, despite the fact that a lot of beers, mostly stouts that have a, a huge alcohol uh, content being maybe 10% or above, uh, a lot of those do a great job of masking the flavor and, and the burn. Yeah. Um, 
this one still feels real mm -hmm. young, real virgin on that. It's, it hasn't mellowed much. Mm -hmm. It's the alcohol is still way up there. Um, but it's a good balance still. Yeah, no, not taken away from it at all. What would you give it um, score on the uh, style? For the style? Which is an American Imperial style. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go eight, a flattering eight. Um, based on some other stuff I've had. <laughs> that. Uh, what would you mean by flattering eight? I'm saying an eight might be a little bit on the higher side, but it, it is very good. But I know that there are some stouts that are so much so much higher. I mean, really. <laughs> I hate to down it because it's a very, very good beer, actually. No, it, yeah. It, and and I guess if you say it's an American styled stout, you know, then well, it's a solid eight. I guess the question is, can you put, and, and for me you can, can you put the Russia, Russian Imperial Stouts in the same category as a regular uh, or an American double Imperial Stout? I think you do. I mean, I would a, because yeah. I can't see where the real differentiation is. Yeah. What what separates those exactly mm -hmm. for this? I mean, and I would say it's very good though. But if if I compared this to a standard, like say Russian Imperial Stout, then I guess that's where the alcohol is coming from in the American style. Is that what defini defines an American style? I mean, it just well, I. I don't think so because you look at uh, uh, Dark Lord, let's say, uh, which is a Russian Imperial, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also 15%, uh, which is obviously higher than this one. Right, so. but it's a mellow mm -hmm. 15. It's not a in-your-face. So anyway, I'll give it an 8, and I'll give it an 8 just fine. I don't mind that at all. So now it's up to you. Yeah. Um, it's tough. Um, I'm going to give it... I'll give it an 8 as well. Um, you're classifying uh, Russian Imperial and American Imperial both into the same uh, higher stout category. Um, I Like you said, I've had a lot better. I mean, I really have. And that's not a knock on this one whatsoever. No, it's a good beer. Um I guess for my Russian Imperial preferences, I do prefer a sweeter flavor, um, but I also prefer a more mellow, silky note yep. uh, throughout <laughs> as far as uh, mouthfeel. Um, this one is a little bit more carbonated than I thought it was going to be. Um, it's still excellent. I mean, you can't, you can't knock it for anything. Um, but for me, my taste preferences, I'm going to give it an 8. Yeah. Uh, what about overall? Overall, I'm going to say... Overall, I'm going to say a 7, and that's because this is not something I can drink regularly. It's not something I'm going to want to drink regularly. If I if I come up on a day where I want a stout, then I'm going to go with, like you said, a buttery, silky, smooth. You know, it's got that nice balanced flavor from front to back, a lot more roasty, chocolatey notes. I want something that's more full. This one, I think the young alcohol in it is just dominating some of those other flavors so it may age better I don't know for people that are new uh, again to the beer scene the craft beer scene when you, when you talk about it being a young beer um, that generally refers only to uh, darker beers or beers that you can sell or, or age um, and what that does is the alcohol actually mellows out over time uh, so the flavor becomes more balanced uh, and then other certain aspects of it are going to come out so you're probably going to get more chocolate more vanilla, uh, maybe more coffee uh, in it instead of just the alcohol kick at the end, um, which is actually going to make for a better overall beer. Um, the longer that you age it, it actually works uh, better uh, instead of, let's say, an IPA, which if you age that, you're going to kill a lot of the flavor, uh, a lot of the aroma. Um, overall, I'll give this one, I'm going to go with an 8 again. I, I actually like bigger stouts like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just being mostly an IPA person to get this type of contrast of flavors. 
it's awesome. I mean, it's awesome. Like if you're going out to eat, you get meat or any kind of you know red meat or anything like that. You pair it with this. Be great. Phenomenal. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for me, if you're just sitting at home, it's you know later in the evening. You want a beer? This to me is what I'm going to go to. I'm not going to go to necessarily a super hoppy beer. Um, I'm going to go for one that's going to relax you. Uh, it's going to put you in a you know. This will do it. <laughs> yeah, say a better mood. Uh, the 12 percent doesn't hurt either. Um, I would like the alcohol burn, like I said, to be maybe a little bit less. Uh, maybe for the carbonation to be a little bit less. Um, you can't do anything about the carbonation necessarily. Um, it will kind of go down uh, as it ages. Um, but again, I don't. It's tough to say because I mean we do only have the one, yeah. um, so we can't necessarily come back on it uh, unless you want to make another trip. Um, <laughs> Eventually. Yeah, eventually, yes. Um, or if you want to send us one. Yeah, but even for a fresh beer like this, for the style, it's it, it's great. Um, yeah, and I'm going to say, uh, even though I gave it a 7 overall and an 8 for the style, I think this would be welcome addition to take to like a Dark Lord Day. I think this oh, is shareworthy. This is something that I would be proud to take and share with other people on an event such as that. I say, L. Smith... It's a solid brewery as well. I mean, it, I mean, they nail pretty much everything that they do. Um, so it's awesome to be able to get one of the beers that they're really known for. Yeah, and you know, I hate that we can that I might rate it here <laughs> yeah. and then turn around and say I'll take it here. Yeah, and it sounds contradictory, but I want you to know that it's not. <laughs> again, yeah, they're based out of California. Um, again, I'm not sure the the length of their distribution. I do know that there are some states, some markets that actually get it. Uh, I know that in uh, around Pennsylvania they do get it. Um, we the, want it. You say the markup though I hear is pretty substantial. Um, but again, at least in Northeast Indiana where we're at, uh, no, you can't get it. I don't recall what we paid for this one, yeah. but again, Apple Jacks in Denver, what a fabulous store. We I got say, it there. You, and again, if you you're not used to getting the the 22 ounce uh, bomber size, um, share it. <laughs> I, yeah, number one, share it. Number two, I'm guessing you're probably paying close to twenty dollars for this bottle. Worth it, yes. Um, maybe not something you want to start out with necessarily. No, I think uh, a mellower stout yeah. for your first stouts would be. But much uh, a little chocolatey or a little mm -hmm. sweeter would be better for the average, the beginner, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, solid beer. Definitely recommend it. Yeah, definitely. Be sure to uh, get your hands on it if you can. If you want to send us another variety of it, go ahead. Uh, like, share, and comment below. Leave us a comment. Subscribe. If you want to send it to us, we'll tell you how to get a hold of us and where to send it. <laughs> uh, definitely subscribe. Yes. Uh, 2DG. 2DG. Thanks.